before we continue looking at the code, what are some ways that you could get images for your website? Let's say you need you need some images of your website. What are some ways that you could get them? You could uh, find them on Google. Okay. Let me let, let me let me talk about that for a minute. It depends what you're talking about. If you're talking about for a school project, yes, you can find them on Google. Okay. As long as you give them credit. If you're talking about something that's not related to a school project, then you would need the copyright holder's permission to use the, use the images. Okay. All right. What are other ways that you could get images? You yes. Take them yourself. You could take them yourself. All right. What is, what's the advantage of that? You want the right to the image? Yeah. The, the advantage of that is that you absolutely, without a doubt, own the copyright to it. So, if you take an image yourself, without a doubt, you own the copyright. What do you have to do to copyright a, an image? This is an interesting question. What do you have to do to copyright an image? Isn't there like a bunch of legal, legal stuff you have to do? Actually not. Okay. You guys are absolutely right. You don't have to do anything to copyright an image. The minute you take an image, you own the copyright to it. Now, the question is, how do you prove you own the copyright to it? That's where the legal issues come into play. All right? Um, and that's where, again, other people, um, you know, other legal people would, would be able to give better advice on how you prove that you own the copyright. But strictly speaking, if you take a picture, you know, if, if I pull out my phone right now and take a selfie, I own the copyright to it. I don't have to file any paperwork or whatever. Just like if you write something, the minute you write something, you own the copyright to it, and so on. Now, to prove that you own the copyright to it is another thing. Some people with manuscripts will like mail a sealed copy to a lawyer. All right, that way, if someone would, were to steal their idea or steal their book, um, they could they could say, well, look, here, I have this that was marked such and such date that has my text in it. Your text didn't appear until after that date. Therefore, I own the copyright to it. But you take it yourself, you control the copyright. What's the disadvantages to that? You own the legal obligation to I clear, the, clear someone else's personal image from... Oh. Right, right. Their ownership of exactly. It. If it was a, taking a picture of a person, you would have to guarantee or re, you, you did, that you had a release sign and all that. So you'd have to you'd have to handle the release of the pictures that are in it of people in it. What else? You may not have the um, like. Let's say it's a, a polar bear or something that you're trying to find. Um, you may not be able to take an, a picture of a polar bear yourself okay. that easily. All right. Um, if, it, it's not always possible, in other words. Yeah. And a good example of that is what if you needed a picture of a polar bear? Well, uh, let's go outside and wait till one wanders by. Probably not going to happen. Or I could fly to where one is, and that would be very expensive. What's another disadvantage of that? Take pic copyright. taking pictures of ourselves. Taking pictures ourselves. Can't guarantee you like quality. Yeah. You're not necessarily a professional. Wow. Not necessarily. <laughs> not necessarily professional quality. You might not have great equipment. You might not know good photo taking techniques and so on. Now, one thing I will say is that you can get really good pictures with mobile devices these days, especially if you're talking about pictures that are just going to be on the web. In other words, pictures 
that uh, don't necessarily have to hang up in the, in, in, in the art museum, right? If you're not talking about like really high resolution and, and uh, has to be artistic masterpieces. But for example, if I wanted, uh, if, if Elsie uh, wanted a picture of the president sitting at her desk, you know, you could probably take a decent picture with an iPhone or uh, a higher end uh, mobile device. All right, and it probably would be good enough for the purposes. Uh, now, you wouldn't know all the, tech, uh, the, the technical details, photography, and so on. So that's a risk. and might not be the highest quality. So what are some other options? How else could we obtain images? You could, uh, if you know someone who is like a photographer or something. Right. You can hire a photographer. Yeah. Presumably they would have the skills and they would have the equipment and so on. What's the disadvantage of that? Money. Money. It would cost more. That's one thing that we didn't put as an advantage of taking it yourself. This is going to be cheap. Right? Um, other disadvantage, possibly, or advantage? A photographer owns copyright. You would have to negotiate the copyright. All right. So you'd have to negotiate the copyright. It wouldn't be as clear cut. Um, Thought I heard someone else say something. Advantage or disadvantage of this? Well, ideally, you should get good quality work. Another option. Again, never had to supply photography for some project, you might not be aware of some of the options. Like One, stock, images. stock images, exactly. What are stock images? What is a stock image? It's like copyright free. Uh, yeah, you. It, 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 yeah, some, some, some uh, images that people put out there. To, that aren't custom for your needs, but you can possibly use them for them. For example, let's say I was doing LC's website and I want a picture of students, right? I could go and go to the College Center, find three students, say, hey, do you mind if we take your figure, uh, picture, get them to sign the releases, and take a photo of them? And they would really be students at LC. You know, you might know them, so you, you saw them on the web page, like, yeah, I know that guy, I had a class with them. With stock photography, you could go and you could find pictures of students. All right, not going to be students that go to LC, but they will be students, and that might be good enough. So the idea of stock images is the quality is going to be high because it's going to be professional for the most part. It's going to be cheaper than hiring a pro. But it won't be custom to your task. All right. So if we want a picture of the college center, all right, they're not going to have a picture of the college center. They may have pictures of students congregating in chairs that you could take and you could use it. Another way is a, a, a method of copyright called. Um, um, Creative Commons. Just lost the words in my head. What are Creative Commons? Creative Commons is where people put out pictures and they say, you can use it if you meet these following conditions. So they sort of like pre-authorize copyright to it. Now, the conditions could be, you have to give me credit. In fact, most of the time, you have to give the, the, the creator credit. 
the conditions might be you can use it for personal use or you could use it for uh, a nonprofit. but if you're using it for a commercial business, one that makes money, then you're not allowed to use it for free. All right, you'd have to negotiate then a copyright deal with that. Um, it might be that you can use it but not alter it. So maybe someone has a beautiful picture of the mountains that you want to put in it. If they say no alterations allowed, you couldn't then Photoshop Godzilla in the background or something like that. Right? That would be that would be illegal. And there's a number of restrictions, and so they sort of pre-approve you and say you can use this image for free but you have to meet these conditions. And that anyone can do. Unlike the student before that said just Googling and using images, we can do that because we're in school, but anyone can use create something that's licensed with a Creative Commons license provided they meet the conditions. So let's look at, these two are probably pretty obvious, let's look at the first and the fourth, Creative Commons and stock photos. <coughs> Let's, a couple people came in late. Kalel and who else? Name? Danny. Danny, okay. All right, let's look up stock photos. By the way, the internet really hurt professional photographers, right? Because professional photographers used to have stock photos, right? But it was very difficult to, you'd have to go to a local photographer and it was very difficult to, um, for, for someone to, to, to get into that business. Now, anyone with a camera can put out stock photos and get paid for photos that they take. All right, here's one, I stock photo. All right, let's, let's, let's make up a, a website. Um, okay, we're doing the Olympics website. Let's say we want to find Olympics. So I'm going to search for Olympics. All right, here are pictures that they show that we can, that we can use. Now, the good news is, is all these, uh, the, you know, you make an agreement to buy them. All these, if there is any um, clearance required, um, it's been obtained, and so on. So if we look at this, let's say, always go for face painters. So we'll, take, we'll say we want to buy this one. We look at it. Notice, first of all, there is a watermark on it. I don't know if you can see it. So you can't just, like, save it and use it. Their mark will be on it. Um, costs $33 for this image. So if we were doing a site for a sporting goods store, let's say, and we were doing a, a special on, you know, Olympic apparel, we could say that we want it for um, $33. Tells you the size, the largest size would be 300 pixels by 2008 pixels, um, and so on. They sort of have two categories, the essentials and the best quality. As you might imagine, as in all cases, the higher the quality, the more expensive it's likely to be. That's, that's probably true with everything. These, as is mentioned, are royalty free. What does that mean, that it's royalty free? The photographer doesn't get any payment from the picture? The photographer doesn't get any payment per use of the picture. So, for example, if I was going to, uh, if I bought this image to use uh, in in a magazine I was I was printing or a book I was printing, all right, I would pay thirty three dollars. The photographer wouldn't get like you know two cents for every book that I sold or something like that. It was like a one time payment, all right. So 
That's stock photos. And again, as you can see, $33 is cheap comparing, you know, imagine if you hired a photographer to come for a couple of hours and take pictures, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be more than that by, by the time that you're done. All right. Um, let's look up college, college students, college students studying. All right. Most of these the backgrounds are nondescript enough that they could be taken on our campus, right? Like this person studying. That could be our library. I don't know what color the shelves are in our library. I'm in there like a couple times a week, and I don't remember what color the shelves are. So that could be our library. And again, only $12 to, to buy this, so we could use this on our site. something like this, and that's, that's kind of the key to stock photography is make them generic enough that that could be our campus. You know, I don't know. You know I, I, I don't know what our campus looks like from every single angle, so I could not say for sure that that's not our campus. You know, it isn't, but, you know, if it were on our website, you know, it's not going to really be uh, confusing. So stock photography is always an option. Um, Another thing that is an option, as I mentioned, is Creative Commons licensed images. And I'm going to go to Flickr. Flickr is a photography website that people can use to share their personal photos. All right? But people can also use it, you, people can also post pictures and share them with a Creative Commons license. So I'm going to look up Olympics here. And I'm going to do an advanced search. Ah, I didn't need to do an advanced search. Right here, any license. So, I could look for any kind of license. So this would be copyrighted pictures and non-copyrighted pic non -copyrighted pictures and so on. I could look for pictures of any Creative Commons license that are have. Create uh, pictures that uh, commercial use is allowed. So that way, even if I was running a business, I'd be allowed to use it. Modifications allowed. Commercial use and modifications are allowed. No copyright restrictions. That would be something that is said to be in the public domain. What does it mean for something to be in the public domain? Anybody can use it. Anyone can use it. When does something become in the public domain? When is something put in the public domain? Oh, around so long. Then. Exactly. One of the things is, and again, I'm, I'm not a lawyer here, but uh, copyrights aren't forever. Copyrights expire at a certain point in time. So if I found a picture from the 1800s, you know, one of the earliest photographs ever taken, that's in the public domain, all right? So I could use that without, without worrying about who owns the copyright of it. Um, another thing that can happen is it can be put in the public domain. If I took a picture today and I didn't, care about the copyright for it, I could just say, well, this is in the public domain. Anyone who wants to can use it. Also, U.S. government works you are uh, permitted to use uh, because the, the thought being, and I don't know if this would be anyone in the world or just uh, U.S. citizens, the thought being is you already paid for them, right, through your taxes, so you can, you can use them. Let's look for commercial use allowed. All right. These are pictures that I could use for a business of the Olympics and even if I was a business and it would be legal under copyright law. Now if you look at these, these generally I don't think are as good a quality as the stock photos are. Some of these I might, I probably would not want to use, but this one's a pretty good picture. So let's look at that one. And if you look, some rights reserved, if I click on the license, it will tell me I am free to 
copy and redistribute the material and remix so I could add I could add Godzilla to this one if I wanted to build upon the material if I give credit all right and there's no additional restrictions so I can't add restrictions to it so if I were to Photoshop Godzilla in this I couldn't say I, I, I therefore I've copyrighted this image I'd have to still have it allowed to be Creative Commons. I can't like use something, alter it, and then claim the copyright to it. All right. So you have options for images. This class is easy. We're allowed to use images off the web, provided we give attribution to them, and provided we don't take too many of them. Uh, the handout for the first week of class, I think, talked about how much you can use from a given site. All right. But again, you're going to leave this class, and you're going to become you might become professional web developers, in which case you need to be aware of these things going forward um, as far as building, building real sites. These, by the way, apply to commercial sites, nonprofit sites, even personal sites. Now, you might say, wait a minute, you know, I've seen a million Star Wars pictures on people's blogs or Tumblrs or whatever. Um, well, Strictly speaking, that would be a copyright violation. Um, the fact that it's not enforced and the copyright owner doesn't push for it doesn't mean that, strictly speaking, it's against the law to do that. So, um, again, I'll, you know, the purpose of class is to teach you the way that, you know, to do things by the book, all right? The fact that things are done in the real world um, is something else. You can bet, though, if you took an image from Star Wars and used it in a commercial website, that they would go after you. They probably just look the other way for personal websites. All right, let's talk more about the actual tags relating to images. There's one tag, and it has two attributes. Remember, attributes are additional information about the tag. page we had an image picture of this guy these guys in their lovely fancy pants all right the tags to do that it is an image tag so IMG for image Two attributes, src equals, and the name of the image file. It's important to get the file extension right. So we have to know the file extension. This is a PNG file, so we have to make sure we end it in a .png. How do I know it's a PNG file? Because I can look, and at the end of it is PNG. Now, your machine at home might be set up not to show file extensions. If I click view on Windows 10, there's an option to show or hide file extensions. So if I turn this off, notice it just shows flower pans. All right? It tells you that it's a PNG file. I would recommend anyone doing web development should go and should enable the file extension so that they can see exactly what the extension is. The reason I say that is PNGs are always PNGs, but JPEGs have a number of different file associations associated with them. JPE, JPG, JPEG, and I think just those, those three. So the fact that it's a JPG file or a JPEG file, you don't know for sure which one of those three extensions it has unless you actually look at the extension. So turn on file extensions. Um, 
if, if the machine that you have at home or, or in the lab or whatever uh, is not showing them. The assumption, again, is this is in the same folder as my HTML code. So notice I have one folder that has everything in it. It has my CSS in it, it has my HTML pages, and it has my images. If it's in the same folder, you only need to put the name of the image. You don't need C colon program files slash user slash Fred slash whatever. In fact, you don't want that. If you ever see either a link or an href for an image that starts like that, C colon slash slash is wrong. So correct it. When I download it to my machine, I don't have those directories. And I'm not going to be able to have that link uh, work or see the image correctly. So for now, let's just assume everything's in the same folder and the, the image name is there. The auto attribute we'll talk more about later, but this displays if this displays under two circumstances, three circumstances, let's say. One is if there's something wrong in the image, uh, I got deleted or something. If you accidentally deleted this image off of your web server, it would show you that alternate text. Two, if someone was on a very slow internet connection back in the old days, sometimes they would disable images so that they wouldn't see the images and they could choose which ones they wanted to download. All right? Back when you were on a dial-up modem, those 300 baud rate modems that were so slow and it took forever to, to download a page. You could disable displaying images, see the description, and decide if you wanted to download that image or not. The other use of this is that it's useful for people that are visually impaired that use um, assistive technology such as screen readers to read, to narrate the page to them. Every image should have an alt as well. All right? Now, an image is a little bit different than other tags in that it does not have an ending tag, or it, it doesn't really need an ending tag. And usually what is done is you put the slash greater than sign to indicate that this tag is a start tag and end tag just rolled into one. I'll make it a little bit smaller for a minute here. This is one start tag. This is one tag. It starts here. The attributes are here. And then slash greater than sign means that this is an end tag and a start tag rolled into one. Now remember these attributes. Some people have been doing some uh, things with links like doing something like this. Putting the start tag like this. And then having the attributes after it. Attributes for a tag, such as the source and the alt for an image, and the href for a link, those are part of the starting tag. So you have the less than sign, the name of the tag, a space, these attributes, and then you have the greater than sign that ends the starting tag. So those additional pieces of information, those attributes, are part of the starting tag. So they should be between the less than and greater than sign. All right, cool. Now, let's say we look at this and we say, yeah, I kind of like this page, but that image is a little big. Maybe I want it like this big instead. It doesn't really need to be that big. You can make an image smaller for all kinds of reasons. Uh, if you have a lot of very large re uh, images, uh, it will make your page uh, longer to download. Some of these factors, like as far as download speed, are less of an issue than they used to be in the good old days, right? Because your connections are so fast now that you can download images really quickly. It's amazing how quickly images download. But, again, you could be on a mobile device, someplace that isn't, uh, doesn't have a good connection, or... For whatever reason, there could be traffic on the network where things are going slow or whatever. Download speed is always a consideration. All right? So you might want to make the image smaller for that reason, or maybe you just don't want it taking up that much space on the page. Maybe you just, you know, you don't need the image to be that big. 